dear students welcome to my youtube channel this is the 31st lecture which is based on linear transformations so till now we have studied about the definition of linear transformation and in the last lecture we have discussed few properties of linear transformations and few other examples so in this video lecture today we will be discussing a theorem and the theorem is let v and w be the vector spaces over the same field basis of v which is v1 v2 and so on to vn and let w1 w2 and so on to wn be any vectors in w right then what we need to prove is that there exists a unique linear transformation so there exists a transformation which is unique also from v to w such that t of vi goes to wi or we can say if t is a linear transformation which is defined from v to w okay of finitely generated vector spaces v and w then we need to prove that that t is completely determined if we know the image of the basis of v under t so that is the another way of stating the above theorem so we need to observe one thing that in order to prove this theorem we need three steps the first step will be existence right then uniqueness existence of a linear transformation so firstly we will be proving existence secondly we will be proving that there yes there is a linear transformation and thirdly we will be proving that yes it is unique so we shall prove this theorem in three steps so first step will be we will be defining a map t from v to w such that this condition holds the second step will be that t is a linear transformation and the third step will be that t is a unique so let's move to the first step so in the first step we need to prove the existence of t so in order to prove the existence i have considered any vector from v and we know that what were the basis of this capital v they were nothing but v1 v2 and so on to vn right so there exist a unique scalars mind it unique scalars such that so scalars can be a1 a2 so on to an which obviously the scalars will come from field such that this vector can be represented in the linear combination of this elements of basis so v can be represented as a1 v1 plus a2 v2 and so on to a n v n right now let t be a map which is defined from v to w and i have defined this map as t of v is equal to a1 w1 plus a2 w2 and so on to a n w n and i have marked this equation as one right now because these scalars are unique so the above map is well defined so this is a well defined map right now each vi can be expressed in the linear combination of vectors of basis so that is if you write vi this can be represented as 0 of v1 plus 0 of v2 and so on to 1 times vi and so on to 0 vn right now if you apply t of vi now by the definition of t of v that is a1 w1 so on to a n w n so if I say T of VI, now what is your VI? VI is all the entries are 0. So this is if I say T of VI, so that is T of 0 V1 plus 0 V2 and so on. 1 of VI and rest others again they are 0. Now by the definition T of V goes to A1 W1, so on to A and W1. So T of 0 V1 and so on to this. This will get mapped to so a1 will be 0 so 0 w1 plus 0 w2 and so on to so 1 of wi and rest other again 0 so that is what i have written here so by the definition of t so t of vi will be 0 of w1 plus 0 of w2 and so on to 1 of wi and so on to 0 w1 so i can say that t of any vi goes to wi so that is what our first step was to prove that if we considered any t any mapping which was defined from v to w then t of vi goes to wi where i was running from 1 to n right now in the second step we need to prove that yes this t is a linear transformation right so in order to prove linearity our main step will be t of so if we proved that t of alpha u plus beta v is equal to alpha t of u plus beta t of v so if we can prove this thing so it means the mapping is linear so let us prove this thing now so we'll be considering u and v be any vectors from v and two scalars alpha and beta 
where u and v can be written as u is equal to in the linear combination of vi's so summation i running from 1 to n vi's vi's and similarly v can be represented as summation i running from 1 to n ci vi right where vi's and ci's they belongs to the field right and because b was a so b was a set which was the basis of v and containing n elements so that is why we have represented this in the linear combination of vi's right now just apply t so t of u will be by the definition t of ui goes to wi right so this will be wi and again this will be wi so t of u is a summation i running from 1 to n bi wi and similarly t of v will be summation i running from 1 to n ci wi right now since v is a vector space so alpha u plus beta v must belongs to v so let us calculate the value of t of alpha u plus beta v now what is your u u is summation i running from 1 to n bi vi and similarly this is the value of v just substitute the value of u and v so you have substituted the value of u here and v here right now so this alpha can be taken inside because it is independent of i similarly it can be taken inside okay so this can be written as summation i running from 1 to n alpha bi into vi plus summation i running from 1 to n beta ci into vi so this step is clear i think now now you can combine both of these terms because the summation is running in both the terms from 1 to n so combining these terms will this will be summation i running from 1 to n alpha bi plus beta ci right into vi now by the definition of transformation we have defined t of vi goes to wi right so this thing will be constant as it is and t of vi will be wi right now just multiply both these so this will be alpha times so you can just multiply this alpha bi wi right plus beta ci wi and just you can add the summation i running from 1 to n right now what you can do is again take alpha outside the summation because it is independent of i right and remaining terms are this similarly for the second term and we know what is the value of summation i running from 1 to n bi wi that is t of u that is what we have calculated so let us mark this equations as so let us mark this equation as star so we can say from star from star right so hence t of alpha u plus beta v is alpha t of u plus beta t of v and hence t is a linear transformation and the last step which we were interested to prove is that yes this t is a unique so in order to prove the uniqueness we will be considering another map so let s be any another linear mapping such that s of vi is wi now if v is equal to alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 and so on to alpha and vn which belongs to v of f so what will be s of v so so just to substitute it here now we know that we have considered s to be a linear transformation so using the property of linearity you can take constant outside so this will be alpha 1 s of v1 plus alpha 2 s of v2 and so on to alpha and s of vn now again we have defined s of vi is wi so s of v1 will be w1 s of v2 will be w2 s of vn will be wn so this is alpha 1 w1 plus alpha 2 w2 and so on to alpha and wn now just look at the definition of t so this is nothing but t of v so s of v comes out to be t of v and which implies this holds for every v so it this implies s is equal to t and hence t is unique with this we have proved this theorem and this theorem plays a very important role in linear algebra in the upcoming video lecture i'll be discussing one more important theorem and then we'll be practicing few questions so i hope you have understood this theorem if you have any doubts you can mention them in the comment section thanks for watching the video and do subscribe to my youtube channel